Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath and it's Tips and Tricks Thursday. In this Tips and Tricks Thursday episode, I'm gonna go over a secret recipe that I have for how to cook tuna. It's not sashimi, it's not poached, we're not making tuna fish sandwiches, we're making a special secret Asian inspired barbecue version of tuna. Delish. Before we get into this though, do us a favor. Hit the subscribe button, give this video a like, leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. All right, everybody, you know what time it is. Let's do this. All right, so what happened is uh, in the last episode that happened Tuesday where we went out fishing Saturday, we caught a bunch of tuna. We caught, uh, I believe it was six tunas total. We, we were actually catching so many that we had to let them go. So. What we are going to do now is we are going to show you how to prepare since, uh, you know, it's not really fair to say, hey, you're going to catch tuna, catch tuna, catch tuna, and then you don't know what to do with them. And we really don't want them to be bait. So we're going to go over this right now with you. We're going to make a marinade and we're going to let it rest for about an hour. First thing I do is I put some salt just to cover the bottom of my bowl. Now I'm going to squeeze the juice of two lemons. Next, we're gonna add a cup of orange juice. Then, we are going to add a cup of soy sauce. So, you can make any amount of the marinade that you want to. I tend to, I'm making quite a bit right now because I got quite a bit of tuna. But you don't necessarily have to make this much. If you have a fair amount, you'll want to. That way when your fish is marinating, um, you have enough marinade to cover the fish entirely. All right, cup of orange juice cup of soy sauce now we're gonna get out oh, about I'd say probably about a quarter to a half a cup of olive oil I'm gonna go with closer to a half a cup All right, now I'm gonna throw in some pepper. I'm going to, we already have salt in there. I'm gonna add in some oregano. I know it might sound weird, but trust me, oregano gives it some extra little tang. And then the last thing that we're gonna do is we're going to throw in a bunch of minced garlic. Don't be shy. This all adds to the effect. And we're gonna get that nice and mixed up. Okay, there's something I have to say about preparing tuna before we go any further. There's a couple of things you want to do when you're filleting a tuna that you want to be cautious about. So the first thing you want to be aware of is when you're filleting tuna is you don't want to spray it down with fresh water. It will form an outer layer on your meat and it'll make, to make it start to turn brown and mushy. You don't want to do that. The next thing you don't want to do is you don't want to remove the skin of your tuna until you're ready to eat it. Right when you're ready to eat it, you can rinse it off and you can remove the skin. Removing the skin from your tuna meat is kind of like the same concept as if you've ever seen an avocado. As soon as you remove an avocado from the, the its outer shell, it starts turning brown. 
Same thing happens with your tuna. So, like I said, you don't want to rinse it off and you don't want to skin it before it's time. So, as you can see, my tuna still has its skin on it. This is a skipjack by the lines. Now, tuna also come with a bloodline. You're going to want to cut that bloodline out. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to skin my tuna. Okay, you can even go a little bit deeper, get a little bit closer to the skin. There's a nice fat layer in there. And whatever you have, if you want to, can be made as a bait strip also. That's left over. Now, we gotta cut this bloodline out because the bloodline on tuna is very fishy. If you have cats, cats like the bloodline. Maybe, I don't know about mine. I think my cats like McDonald's. So if you've got any mushy parts of your skin, now is the time to get rid of it. Have a nice red colored meat going on. So trimming up your tuna is, is very important because it can have a rather strong flavor and be unpleasant if you don't prepare it right. So what I'll do usually is, we caught this Saturday, it's Tuesday, so I'm just going to take extra care to trim it up nice. Alright. Okay. Now we've got our tuna all nice and trimmed up. Next process that we're going to do is we're going to rinse it off in fresh water and we're going to put it back in the bag and then we're gonna dump our marinade in it and let it rest for about an hour. All right, so now we're just gonna place all of our tuna steaks here in the bag. And then, we are going to take our marinade pour it in now we're going to seal our bag put it in the refrigerator for about an hour. So while you're waiting for this hour, piece of advice, you might want to get your grill ready and about 20 minutes or so before your hour is up, fire that puppy up. That way your charcoal ash is over nice and good and it has time to kind of settle down a little bit then you'll be perfectly ready to throw your tuna on. All right, our tuna's been marinating for about an hour. It's time to get this goodness on the grill. So we've got our grill all fired up. Coals are ashed over real nice. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna take our tuna steaks and lay them out in a sort of diagonal fashion. Now, like I said, it only takes a few minutes to cook this stuff. What you're going to want to do, once you get all your tuna laid out, is you're going to want to do what's called choking your flame, which means we're going to close the grill top and have all of our vents closed, which means the fire will get no air. That way the oil doesn't make the, uh, the grill flame up. That's how you choke it. No air coming out, it'll just seep out through the sides. All right, so in about three or four minutes, we're gonna flip it over. So we're ready to flip this here goodness over.
You can see you get little sear marks on it. it looks all nice and delicious. Because as humans, we inherently eat with our eyes. So it's got to look good. Boy, shh. If only you could smell this. If YouTube had a smell -o tube that would be great right about now. Little, the, the citrus flavors. The oregano. This is why I love cooking tuna like this. Instead of, you know, maybe pan searing it or making sushi out of it. The kids love it too. Alright. About another three, four, five minutes like this. Let it cook all the way through. And then we're chowing. Alrighty. Moment of truth. Whoosh. Like I said, this is... Sorry if anybody is feeling hungry right at this point. Trust me when I say this is definitely how to do your tuna. Alright. Uh, incidentally, I have to wish my grandmother happy 88th birthday today. That's right. I, my grandma. And she is the person who actually taught me pretty much everything I know about fishing. So, happy birthday, Grandma. Alright, there we have it. Asian-inspired barbecued tuna. My favorite. So, this is how I like my tuna. I am not going to eat it in front of you because I'm just not like that. But trust me when I say it's going to be delicious. So, now you've got yourself a real secret family recipe. Alright folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope to see you next Tuesday for our Sunday showdown that's going down. Going to try and get offshore and possibly do some wreck fishing this weekend. Alright, until next time. South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> you know how hard it is to talk to yourself to a camera? Are you gonna say hi? Hello. <laughs> this is Bella, South Florida fishing girl, <laughs> tuna slayer.